Welcome back to Ben's Garage. Uh, today, we're gonna have a bit of a, a part one of the solar panel saga. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a series. Today, it's planning stages. I'm laying things out, working out how it's all gonna go before I get it all mounted on the wall. So I'm gonna show you the electrics coming into the house, where it goes through into the other room, and um, how I'm gonna be wiring up all these components here. So I've got like a main um, breaker, the, the PV breakers, the inverter, and the, the main board where it distributes your electrics. Now this cable is for your PV. This is 20 meters at six millimeter. So it's got MC4 plugs on one end and it's just bare at the other end. And that's gonna go into the, the breaker. I've got some, I've got, a, two meters of the six mil stuff without any ends on it so I can strip those off. So that'll come from the breaker to the the, the, the box here, which has got a, a, that's not really a breaker. The first thing it comes into is a disconnect, basically. That'll come into a breaker with a surge protector. So this is what this wire's for. Um, there's, no, there's no plugs on this. So this stuff's got one plug on it. That'll be coming from the solar panels. This stuff I can just bare the ends and wire it up. So we'll have some wire from the uh, the disconnect to the breaker and the surge protector, from the surge protector and breaker up to the inverter. That's the PV side of it taken care of. Then we'll have a 32 amp feed from our main board into the inverter for grid power. And then we'll have an AC out into the distribution panel, which will then send electric to wherever we want it. Now the beauty of this is if we're not making enough solar power, the grid will take over. I think um, you can do the settings on this inverter for if, um, say you're, you're only generating 1500 watts on the solar panel and you put the kettle on and that's say 2.2 kilowatts, so 2200, it makes up the difference on the grid. Um, that's what I believe it does. There's so many settings on this inverter um, we are looking at batteries um, and we are looking at getting a framework for the, the solar panels because I, I was going to knock up a frame out of wood, but I thought, well, that, it's not going to last long, is it? You know, even, even if it's treated, you've got to keep looking after wood. Now, I found a, a framework, a galvanised framework, which is guaranteed for 25 to 30 years. It, it It's sort of pricey, but it's not too bad. So we might be getting one of those to put all the solar panels on. Looking at batteries as well, uh, I'm looking at some lithium batteries which are like rack mounted, you know, so like 19 inch, I think they are. Uh, you can rack, mount them in a rack or you can stack them on top with some little clips. Um, they seem to be the longest, the longest lasting f and the best bang for your buck. Uh, if you work out the kilowatt hours, and how much you pay, obviously they're quite expensive lithium batteries. Now this is a 48 volt system, so it's, they're gonna be more expensive, but at the end of the day, a 48 volt solar system will run better than a 12 or 24. Um, the bigger the system, the thinner the wires you need. When you get down to 12 volts, obviously you're converting 12 volts into 240, say, I mean, we're about 230 volts here. Um, if you're converting 12 volts into 240, you'll need a quite a thick cable because they will get hot. Whereas 48 volts into 240, it's not quite a, such a strain. Um, so that's why we went for that option. I think a lot of household systems are 48 volts. Um, so yeah, I'm, we're looking at a couple of lithium batteries. Now they're 2.4 kilowatt hours. It, it, it's, it's just numbers and figures that just baffle me. But I'm, I'm working it out, I'm getting there. Uh, you know, if you're following along with this, you're learning at the same time that I am. Um, but obviously we're putting the money into the learning. <laughs> uh, now, the lithium batteries are 2.4 kilowatt hours, which I think, I, I don't know how many amp hours that is. Um, but we're looking at getting two, putting them in parallel. If you, when you parallel the batteries, each battery is 48 volts, you parallel them, the voltage stays the same, but you double your capacity. So that will then be 
uh, 2.4, so it'd be 4.8 kilowatt hours. Now, somebody did suggest in the video that I did before, if you get a solar system, get on to change your electric so that it's cheap overnight so you can charge your batteries overnight. Now, we did look into that, but in France, the, the tier system and the, the electric companies, it, it just, it's not worth it. It really is not worth it. The, the, I, I can't really go into numbers. <clears throat> if anyone's interested, I will do. I'm gonna to have to get a little whiteboard and we'll do little demonstrations. I will probably get one anyway because they'll be handy for up in the garage. But um, yeah, it what it costs to change your uh, tiers on the electric side of things so that you get cheap rate overnight, it, it doesn't benefit because you get cheap rate overnight, but it's sort of almost about almost 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Is that how they charge? more during the day now hopefully during the day we're not going to be using electric but uh, as much electric i should say um so that would be the chance to charge the batteries up with the solar the inverter will charge the batteries up through the grid if you need to um but that's just something we're looking into you said electric is very strange in France. Like in the UK, I don't know how many amps you or kilowatts you get in coming into your house. But in France, it's tiered. So the minimum, absolute base minimum, is three kilowatts coming into your house. Now, normally, when people don't pay their bills, they drop you down to three kilowatts. I don't think legally they can cut you off, cut you off, because obviously there's a standard of living you've got to have. Uh, they will cut you off if you don't pay, but during months from October through till March, they class that as winter months, they're not allowed to cut you off, but they can drop you right down to three kilowatts. Normally, that's enough to, once you switch your kettle on, it'll trip your power off, <laughs> and it, it's annoying. So, base rate is six kilowatts coming into your house, then it goes six, nine, 12, 15, and I think up to 18. Uh, we're, we was on, well, our bill said we were on six kilowatts and it kept tripping off every five minutes. It was a pain in the neck. So we called them out, says, can you put us up to nine? He came out and he says, oh, you're already on nine. Oh, well, on our bill, it says we're on six. Anyway, he fiddled about with some switches in the, the first box over there uh, and he puts up to 12. So we was on 12 kilowatts and it was still cutting in and out and messing about. They've since fitted that linky box. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. And um, since they fitted that, we've not had any problems, touch wood. Uh, but whether that's whether our old meter, it was one of the really old meters with the spinning disc in it, um, whether that was like really weak and with surges of power, it kept tripping off. It was, it was getting to be a bit of a pain. But that's all sorted now. So we're on 12 kilowatts coming into the house. We can go up to 18. I think when you get to 18, it's sort of like commercial. But um, no, 12 kilowatts is doing us quite well at the minute. We've had everything running on 12 kilowatts. We've had t the Hobbit's oven, my oven, we've had the kettle on, we put the air fryer on, everything, and it didn't trip off. So the solar PV panels come into the breaker, or the disconnect, I won't call it a breaker because it's just a disconnect, into the bottom of there with your six mil cables. So then it's gonna come from your disconnect up to the breaker box where we've got the um, where we've got a 32 amp breaker and a surge protector. So then the PV wires are going to come out of that box up into the inverter, and they'll plug into the inverter and that'll power the inverter when the disconnect has been switched to on. Now we're on the inverter, we don't have to have it grid tied, but the AC out will be coming out to our distribution board. So I'll take you over there, we'll have a look at the electric coming into the house, and then we've got it running through into the other room, and we'll have a look what's in there and what it's gonna entail, getting this all connected up. So this is where the electric comes in. It comes into the box at the bottom, up into some main fuses, then the linky box, and then right at the top is where your free phase is all sorted out. We, we had to keep that box up there, but when it's all done, we've got all this electric done, we're gonna box this in, put like a little cupboard around it, so that it'll look a little bit neater. Um, it's a bit cobwebby at the minute, but uh, oh, it's, it's a work in progress, this house. 
But um, yeah, that, this is where the electric comes in. Uh, and then what, well, dad did, he's done the electrics on this house for us. He, he ran the three phases through into the other room and uh, we'll go and have a look at that now. So here are our three phases, three red ones. That's your three phase. Blue one's your neutral. So at the moment we've got two circuits. This third phase, which is not wired in at the other room, that's gonna be up to the garage. So we've got one phase doing this circuit, another phase doing this circuit. So we've got your main conjunctors there and there, and then we've got the 32 amp one there for the one of the ovens, and there's a 32 amp one up there for the other oven. Because um, we've got the Tina's got an oven and I've got an oven. Um, they're not his and hers, but uh, it keeps them separate on the circuits. So this top circuit looks to be all lights. They've all got 16 on them, and this one on the bottom looks to be all sockets. They've all got 20s. Um, so, what we're going to be doing, this is the earth, obviously, that's your earth, grounding wire, which runs outside, and that's all done properly outside. This conjunctor here is going to be for this phase here, which is for the garage, and then that will run up to the garage and will have its own board up there. Now, one of these circuits has got the one of the ovens on, that's 32 amp. We'll possibly be putting one of those ovens in the new box, which will go on the wall here somewhere. Um, for grid tying the inverter, we'll be taking a 32 amp feed from here, running it into the inverter on big fat cable, like the cooker, cooker cable here. Uh, this is quite fixed stuff. Um, that'll go into the inverter and then the, we'll, have, we'll use this cooker cable stuff to come out of that inverter into the new board um, with this thick wire and that will go into that so we can have all the stuff powering on the solar in the, in the other board but this slot we'll be keeping on the grid for the time being until we sort of know what we're doing with the solar system so that's the board as it is at the moment I say it's three phase coming in so there's your three red wires for your three phase there's your neutral so that third phase is not being used at the minute, but that's for the garage. This one here, here's your, here's your ground, that runs down outside. It's uh, a lot of copper cable, is coiled up underground and then it goes into a ground spike. That's all done to code, or whatever they call it. Um, so this is the earth that we're going to be using, because you don't want separate earths for everything, because you end up with a ground loop, and that if you get a lightning strike, that won't do your your uh, inverter any good so you want to be using the same earth this is what I've worked out on you uh, watching YouTube videos and stuff so this is our setup in the here at the minute uh, do please excuse the decor we're we're still not done this room but this is the wall that I'm going to be putting the inverter on with all the other bits and pieces temporary of course so that is a brief summary of what I've got planned out in my head I've been doing research uh, on research on research. There's there's a lot to learn. But once you sort of get it into your head, what you're doing, it is quite straightforward, I think. Um, if you see any glaring errors that I've mentioned, let us know in the comments below. Um, if any of you out there are solar experts, let me know if I'm gonna be doing anything wrong. Uh, <laughs> as I say, if you're watching along, you're learning with us because I've never ever done anything solar before. Uh, as I say, I've done a lot of research and there's a lot of stuff on, on the internet and I've asked questions on forums and stuff like that. A lot of the forums are sort of American based where a lot of it is grid tied and they don't have batteries. Some of it is off grid, um, but the people that seem to be answering my questions are grid tied specialists and they're all like, get your permits, do this, and make sure it's all to code. We don't need a permit for putting our solar panels up because we're keeping them below 1.8 meters. The, the framework's gonna be on the floor. We're not putting them up on the roof. If we was putting them up on the roof, we'd need permits and stuff for that. Uh, we're keeping them below 1.8 meters. Now, uh, I'm not sure we'll be doing everything to code as we're supposed to by French law, 
whether we'll then have to get an electrician to inspect it for for no other reason than our house insurance. I mean, if the house was to burn down and they say, oh, you've, in, you've installed solar, you've done something wrong, they won't pay out. So I might have to get an electrician in once we've done it all, just to get him to certify it, sign it off, that kind of thing. Um, we'll, ta we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But this is what I'm planning out. I say, if there's any errors that any of you lot have noticed out there and think I'm going down the wrong track, then let me know. Uh, um, we can fire up a bit of a discussion in the comment section. But uh, as far as I can see, it's all going to be work. It'll all work and be safe. Uh, we've got the disconnect, we've got the breaker for the solar panel. We've got the distribution board with all the breakers. We've got the, the board in that room with all the breakers with the 32 amp feed going into this. As far as I can see, there's breakers everywhere. It's going to be earthed. I think that's going to be about it. So the next stage is I'm going to get it all mounted on the wall, which I'll do in another video. I'm just sort of showing all my, showing what, what we've got to play with and um, we'll take it from there. So the next video is hopefully I'll be starting to fix stuff on the wall and we'll, we'll have a bit of a better idea then about this framework for the uh, solar panels and possibly batteries, you know. Um, if things work out right, then uh, that might be happening sooner rather than later, I don't know. But we'll have to, we'll cross that bridge. I've already said that, haven't I? Um, yeah, we'll know a bit later on whether, whether we're going to sort all that out sooner rather than later. So yeah, I hope you liked this video. Please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.